Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. A four-year-old child presented to ER with complaints of fever and shortness of breath since 10 days. Initial PAT assessment, appearance child alert and active, breathing, patient, baby child is tachypneic, respiratory rate of 42 per minute, ALR flaring was there, chest retractions were there, color pink. Primary survey, airway is patent, no pulling of secretions, breathing, respiratory rate 42 per minute, saturation 95 percentage with 5 liter oxygen. Uh, air entry was reduced on the right side. Uh, coming to circulation, heart rate was 100 per minute, BP 90 bar 60 millimeters of mercury, uh, capillary refilling time less than 2 seconds, skin color is pink. Uh, coming to disability, patient responds to verbal stimulus, pupil equivalent reacting to light. Exposure temperature was 99 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, coming to history. Uh, a four year old child. You can give a sample history, quickly a sample history. Uh, signs and symptoms, the patient was having fever and uh, shortness of breath since 10 days. Mm -hmm. She was initially with antibiotics from outside hospital and managed and then she was referred to. Okay. Allergic, no allergic history. Uh, past history, uh, uneventful, uh, no further um, past history of this pneumonia or any shortness of breath, any hospital admissions. Uh, last meal was in the morning. One okay, one, okay, okay. And immunized up to the age. Okay. Um, Fine. So, we have a four-year-old female child, female child uh, who has come to the ER and you did an initial PAT assessment where you thought there is a respiratory distress. So, she is having respiratory distress and on your initial assessment, you didn't get any features of upper respiratory, you didn't get any features of lower respiratory obstruction, you didn't get any abnormal breathing pattern only thing what you get is crepitations and air, air and decreased air entry so from this we have two conclusion either we are dealing with an lung parenchymal disease or it's a plural involvement so that's it so there is no upper airway like laryngeal tracheobronchitis group no, out v is out so lower respiratory obstruction out abnormal breathing pattern in the sense postictal she is not postictal she is otherwise conscious oriented so primarily we are dealing with some plural with lung maybe a combination of this thing so that is our finding now what are the possibilities that we need to consider here whether it is a pneumonia consolidation or whether it is a plural effusion so these are the two differential diagnoses air entry is there but decreased so pneumothorax I will uh, remove it away. So, either it is a plural effusion versus pneumonia. So, these are only two possibilities that we need to suppose or else what else you need to think in a four year old child will be a collapse. A foreign body that is causing obstruction and there is some amount of infection that is happening and there is an underlying collapse to the lung. So, these are the differential. So, clinical examination wise you need to differentiate between these three. So, uh, what will happen for a pneumonia? You will have Crepitations and uh, auscultation before that percussion. Percussion will be vocal fermenters, vocal resonance. Uh, it will be increased. Yes, then uh, percussion. Percussion, it will be normal. It it is not dull. Uh, not dull. It can be normal between normal and dull. Sometime depending upon the consolidation. Then you go uh, to the auscultatory finding for pneumonia. What all you can have? Bronchial breathing can be You can get bronchial breathing if you get that well and good. But otherwise, sometimes you might get crepitation or you might get there is an associated pneumonic effusion also. Then it might be a little bit difficult. Then coming to consolidation, uh, sorry, plural effusion. What will be your finding? Vocal fremitus and uh, which will be uh, less. Mm. And uh, percussion, dull note will be. Dull note less. on percussion. And then uh, on auscultation, air entry will be. Decreased. Less. Okay. So, what will be the tracheal position? will be deviated to opposite side. Okay, opposite side if it's a massive effusion. So then coming to collapse. Collapse, uh, the vocal fremitus and vocal uh, will be less because mm. there is no air mm. entry. Uh, and uh, the on air entry will be not. Air entry will really diminish. What will be to the trachea? Trachea will be shifted to same side. Same side. So that is how we have to differentiate. So from this, what do you think after your clinical examination? These three possibilities, what, what, what is your in, inference on this? It was having a uh, tracheal deviation to the left was there. Okay. So, usually the what is the thing? It will be trachea is shifted to the right side. Instead of that, the trachea is shifted to the opposite side. So, that is one that shows that it has got a significant, some pathology is pushing the lung to the opposite side. 
then tony dalna sound percussion okay and then uh, rare entry was reduced on the right side right side so we have come to a conclusion that we are dealing with a plural effusion 10 days whether it's a plural fluid or whether it has become an embryo we don't know maybe after 10 days of progression the fluid can become infected and can become an embryo also so pneumonia is there may maybe or may not be there uh, lung parenchyma will not maybe there or it may, can be a simple uh, plural effusion but mostly it will be associated with a pneumonia with a yeah. effusion where it, the patient has gone into a synemonic effusion and that in uh, synemonic effusion would have causing uh, a tracheal shift and it would have turned into an empyema that only you will know how toxic is the child so looking at the child the child is tachypneic and uh, the patient is hypoxic also i will say hypoxic even if 95% oxygen is maintained that is with your 5 liters of o2 so the child is receiving approximately 35 to 40 percentage of fao2 and in that only the child is having a 95 percentage saturation so our inference is that we have got a 4 year old child 10 days history of fever cough who is toxic who is in respiratory distress Uh, maybe impending respiratory failure uh, we are not very sure it is impending the 42 respiratory rate we can take it as type 1 respiratory failure for time being going on to a maybe a type 2 when an intervention is not been done at this point of time so that is our inference now we wanted to use adjuncts to confirm our diagnosis so that's it so what are the adjuncts what interventions that you wanted at this point of time because the child is started on oxygen so 95% i am reasonably happy with it 42 respiratory rate on the higher side but you have started on oxygen then what will be the next intervention i would like to see an abg preferably an abg but uh, maybe or may not uh, if you are getting an abg you will be able to see if the child is going for a type 2 respiratory failure so that is the advantage so abg might be helpful in this child Uh, but the child is irritable and all we might be uh, wait for some time and take an abg but abg is a good uh, tool most important investigation what you wanted to do in this patient as a next surgeon chest x-ray it will be i will say uh, you get an ultrasound immediately bedside ultrasound chest x-ray you need okay. you need some time but here ultrasound you can just ask just put the probe and see how is the effusion now looking at that effusion and you will have to definitely this needed to be drained so sure Uh, to be drained there is no doubt in this because there is a massive pleural effusion which is shifting trachea to the opposite side needed to be drained whether the child has been already drained uh, that i am just stopping just imagine that this child has come to us first so uh, we need to drain this so what will be the ultrasound findings so, see looking at the ultrasound findings okay when will you say okay this is we should tap we should uh, not tap or we can wait by giving iv antibiotics so what will be the decision by looking at the ultrasound see what is the difference between a chest x ray and an ultrasound uh, uh, effusion we can uh, quantify the uh, effusion and mm. septations can be seen uh, the thing is that to get an effusion in a chest x ray it might be tricky because very early you might not be able to get an pleural effusion very evident in the chest x ray when you look at the x ray just maybe in ground glass appearance that maybe cp angle if you start getting a cp angle blindness and all those things like you have 400 ml minimum that is i am telling little bit older child to the adult child so around 400 ml is confirmed if you are just having a cp angle blinding so now next thing what is the advantage of ultrasound that even a minimal pleural effusion we can able to see that and most importantly we can see how the echogenicity of that fluid is so that is again very important when you are seeing a normal echogenicity when you are seeing a fluid with lot of septation so lot of septation again it is suggestive of that that needed to be drained with a larger bore uh, to whatever you are using maybe for diagnostic purpose you can just do the tapping but the problem is that this much amount of fluid maybe with a small lumen one it will not come out maybe that child might require an icd so that is the impression so looking at that how the septation is this you can quantify the fluid and how complex is the pleural effusion you will get an idea that is the one major advantage so i'll prefer to do an ultrasound immediately 
definitely you can take an x-ray and you can look for the other uh, uh, features how much is the effusion holds right side left side all those things can be done but ultrasound is a very good uh, tool so what was done for this child uh, UST chest was done mm. uh, larger right organized pleural collection with mm. multiple thick internal separations mm. and eccentric echogenic solid appearing areas and honeycomb appearance okay several of larger locules have clear fluid with fine separations Collapse consolidation of the right lung with only part of right upper lobe is aerated. Okay. So, uh, from whatever you had said, it is a large effusion. And one more thing that we got information is an insistent. That also we will come to know when you are doing an ultrasound. Maybe chest x ray you might not be able to say, but sometime you will be able to say an insisted effusion. But that is another uh, uh, important thing that we have understood from the ultrasound. See, now this child has come to me. When I am, what will you do next? You, I want to drain this. So, what will you decide how you wanted to drain this? Maybe a simple diagnostic tapping or you wanted to put an ICD. Ideal will be an ICD for this child. Ideal thing will be an ICD. That is the first thing. The child has come to you. You don't pigtail drainage and all. If it is like septations and all, the drainage won't be adequate. Uh, it will not be a good thing to do a pigtail drainage. Rather than put an ICD and drain out the fluid. That will be the ideal situation for this child. Maybe it's a minimal this thing. Then you can start off in an antibiotic and you get just tap and do a diagnostic and look in for your lights criteria so uh, what was done for the child from outside hospital uh, they were actually uh, UAC thorax showing uh, effusion that did a diagnostic tapping okay which showed total counts of 230 with neutrophils of 94 percent and lymphocytes of uh, 6 percent and elevated LDH okay so this implies what bacterial. probably you're dealing with the exudative effusion bacterially and uh, in this child, I am unlikely to suspect a malignancy. So, that is one differential malignancy and in, in this scenario, tuberculosis also should keep in your background. Whether it is a tuberculosis, the child is coming with TB associated or it is a pure bacterial infection. Then, most important investigation from the pleural fluid, what is the most important investigation that you wanted to send? I will say a gram stain. Gram stain is a very good cheaper investigation which you can do a proper gram stain what is the organism you will be able to get so what is the most common organisms causing these things Streptococcus pneumonia. it is all gram positive organism for that reason everything is usually gram positive community acquired organism same thing but very rarely you will have a typical organism very very rarely my chlamydia causing and all it's very very rare so almost every time it is a gram positive organism most of the time and if the hospitalized for a longer time then only you have to think of an mrsa and all those things so usually this this is the pattern of organism what you need to suspect so your antibiotic selection will be depending on that we'll come to that now uh, it was tapped and what was done to the child later uh, later uh, means from outside hospital she was tapped and then uh, but uh, there was persistent fever and tachypnea was increasing so okay. they referred here for surgical management. surgical intervention so now the question arises we'll just discuss about the plural effusion antibiotics they have started so uh, they have given her antibiotics she was not improving so that is the time they decide okay this patient needs a surgical intervention so one more thing that has been proven to be effective when you are putting an icd is a thrombolytic fibrinolytics administration of fibrinolytics through the icd if icd is getting blocked if there is a lot of septations and all you can use your tpr or even streptokinase and we can just lyse the clot and and it will be much more better drainage will happen this child i would have preferred maybe the initial phase maybe an icd would have delayed a surgery sometimes or maybe avoided a surgery also we don't know but icd would have been a better option when you see septations and all those things if you drain it also a pigtail drainage of the draining will not drain will not happen so the primary intention whenever an abscess is formation is what you need to drain it antibiotics is first but also draining the thing source control is very very important when you have a patient with sepsis so it should have been drained with an icd initially that would have been an ideal situation Okay, so now uh, coming to uh, the style has come to you initially, you think initially, how will you select the antibiotics? So what all antibiotics you wanted to give to this child, a four year old child, no previous history of pneumonia or any infection, no previous other hospitalization coming from the community with a short history of fever, cough and breathlessness has come to you, for, uh, this is the child. So what will you antibiotic, you will start. Ampicillin. Okay. Uh, or, or else we can start on ceftriaxone. Mm -hmm. Uh, then uh, the, what we said is very clear what you said is you are telling regarding the drugs that will cover your gram positive organism so if you wanted to give cephalosporin you have to go ahead with a second generation cephalosporin and above okay. 
you cannot uh, give a lower down second generation cephalosporin cefuroxime onwards you can start so that will be a preferred agent and you wanted to cover an anor you are suspecting an aspiration also then you add clindamycin to it so you are suspecting an aspiration so cef uh, cefuroxime or ceftriaxone uh, with clindamycin and you wanted a better gram positive coverage multiple hospital admissions maybe after 5 to 6 days they again not improving then you need to have vancomycin very very rarely you need to give in a typical coverage for the situation very rarely unless and until you have features of any other atypical pneumonia or any of your atypical uh, panel anything came positive otherwise you need not give on a macrolide so the regimen should be somewhere around ceftriaxone plus or minus clindamycin plus or minus vancomycin depending upon uh, how the child is presenting to you so that is the usual preferred regimen and uh, that should be reasonable coverage you don't need to go ahead with a good gram negative usually it is rare but multiple hospital admission you are handling with an icd and all chance of getting in hospital acute gram negative is also there so that also have to be thought of so that is your antibiotic of choice and how long you need to give antibiotics 10 to 14 days 10 to 14 days and followed by oral antibiotics also might be required for a longer duration uh, not just like our pneumonia treatment maybe uh, empyema you need to give it for a longer duration also fine so uh, now next what is the option you have to decide whom need a surgical intervention whom doesn't need a surgical intervention so that how will you decide uh, we can uh, initially if there is a small uh, uh, if it is small uh, effusion we can initially do with iv antibiotics and if it is improving we can continue the antibiotic if it is not improving or the stress x-ray is showing increasing the effusion or with uic showing localizations we can uh, decide with the uh, this uh, vats and IC. okay okay so that's it and uh, a ct usually uh, when you look into ct uh, you have doubt in your mind you have another differential diagnosis in your mind you want to know whether there is any mediastinal load involvement or anything then definitely a ct might be required but usually when you look into the empyema if you have a reasonable x ray and ultrasound we can manage that's not i am not saying that every patient needs a ct but it can be managed even without a ct also uh, but when you are planning for a vats and all definitely they will ask for a ct uh, they want to know the structure how is it and most importantly the child is having recurrent pneumonia then you have to think definitely you are having a foreign body aspiration so that is one most common in this age group 4 year old like at the age of 2 years old and all the child is having recurrent pneumonia 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 and child is getting admitted antibiotics foreign body aspiration is one thing maybe a bronchoscopy also might be warranted after a ct you want to look for any what will happen that foreign body would have gone and it would have been part of the normal lung tissue and it will be very challenging situation so you have anything else to be added on from your point of view when a child comes with shortness of breath uh, whom should to admit and whom should be we discharge uh, for that there is classification no pneumonia pneumonia and severe pneumonia uh, if there is only cold and cough cold and cough we can discharge the patient or oral antibiotics if there is fast breathing it is pneumonia uh, the classification is like 0 to 2 months it is more than 60 2 months to 12 years it is more than 50 more, more than 12 years it is more than 40 then uh, if it is severe pneumonia then there will be danger signs poor oral intake chest in drawing strider in a calm child this all showing a severe pneumonia we should admit in icu and iv antibiotic should be taken okay so uh, the most important group of patient that comes to the ed when you look into the pediatric age group majority of them doesn't need admission they need some uh, maybe some nebulizations all those group only but the problem here is now the child children has having lot of risk factors so that also we need to think about so not just this classification when there whenever there is a risk factor congenital heart disease associated congenital heart disease failure to thrive history was there previously now only the child is improving so any history of some immunodeficiencies and all better to admit the child and uh, put them on parenteral antibiotics but uh, because they will deteriorate very fast we will not be able to say so when we are doing the audits of patient those who are coming back to the er within 72 hours what we had seen this group of patients are at high risk so it is always better that this group of patients are admitted at least for 24 to 48 hours under observation then if you don't find anything the child is active taking oral fluids then you can discharge or I, ideally if you are not admitting at least keep them on observation for at least 12 to 24 hours so that is the uh, take home message coming to uh, the take home message for the pediatric empyema or you can call it as a plural effusion uh, plural pathologies in child ultrasound is one of the very good tool that we can use how it helps you can quantify the amount of fluid and you can know what is the type of fluid 
whether there is a lot of septation, how, uh, whether it is an insistent and all those things you will come to know. And depending upon that, if it is like lot of septations and all, 3 to 4, there is some category, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 and grade 4. Grade 3 and grade 4, like lot of septation and insistent, straight away you can plan for an early surgical interventions also. Rather than putting an ICD, straight away video assisted thoracoscopic surgery is also a possibility. But uh, don't forget to start off antibiotics and keep the common uh, organisms that you wanted to cover. That is what I said, it's gram positive and uh, third gen second generation cephalosporins, anything above that is reasonable, followed by clindamycin for aspiration and you suspect an MRSA or a good gram positive coverage, you can think of angomycin. Routinely macrolides like azithromycin, clarithromycin, very rarely a typical causing empyema, but you have very rare situations, so you need to start that also. So that is the basic coverage that you need to remember and always remember, do the lights criteria and uh, TB and malignancy, two differential diagnosis. It might not be an infective, it can be a malignant pathology and tuberculosis, another thing that we should never forget. Okay. Anything else that you want to tell? Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.